Hey everyone, today we got a 6175M in the shop. We're doing a battery disconnect on it. I've already got started on it and got most of the work done, but we're gonna go take a look at it, kind of run you through what we've done so far and what we got to do to finish it. And we'll get it all pieced back together and working and see how it works. All right, let's get at her. Okay, so to start off with this battery disconnect, you're gonna have to take the step off and the plastic guard in front of the wheel on this side of the tractor, the battery side. One of the first things we did and it's already done is we installed this new battery cable, which will connect to the battery, goes to the boosting post and up into the new relay. The two bolts for the new relay are right there and it mounts up under there. You can see it right there. It comes with a new battery cable in the kit that connects to this terminal right here and then some more wiring, a fuse, and then there's uh, another adapter harness that goes from, this is the control wire for the relay, I guess, and it goes up right under here. You can see this is a, a dead end plug with a jumper. You unplug that and you'll plug it into the adapter harness for that. And then we have a couple grounds. Then we'll hook up our wires for our auger. We're gonna put them on the disconnect, so everything runs the disconnect. One thing to note about this series of tractor and this disconnect, it's a factory integrated disconnect. There is a software update that needs to be done. So John Deere can come out and do that for you. It's gonna automatically disconnect the battery when you shut off the key. So it's kind of slick like that. It's been a bit of a process to get it on though. It's not just a simple disconnect, but it should work really good once it's all done. All right, so I'm gonna get into getting the new cable installed, getting that old, old battery cable off and connect the new one up and connect those few grounds and then we'll test it out and see how it works. Okay, so we got those battery cables connected there. This is for our auger. This one is for our uh, two-way radio. We've got them on this side of it, so that way they'll be a part of the shutoff side of the relay. We've got our new battery cable connected down there now. Get everything routed nice. We'll take some zip ties after and tie it up good. This right here is where we installed the new fuse for the new relay. Now we're gonna take our new cable, which is just a jumper cable, and it's gonna take it from this eight pin plug up to this 12 pin up under here. So that is located right underneath the cap. One thing that you should know is that when you're doing this disconnect, you're gonna get the main kit and then inside the instructions of the main kit, you're gonna to have to go through and pick depending on your year model and what options you have on the tractor is what's gonna decide on which this jumper cable you get. Okay, let's get this installed and then we'll go underneath and we're gonna put the grounds on. Okay, we got that one plugged in up there. That jumper cable I just left there just in case everyone wants to go back to stock. Probably should take, we'll take some tape after and we'll tape that up to make sure no dirt gets in there. This I just have it looped around and down and around there. So I'll zip tie that up when I go underneath. Let's get that ground connected. And then we'll be able to try it out. If everything looks good and works good, we'll put the step and the cover back on and that'll be a wrap. Okay, as you slide in under the tractor and you come straight back from the battery and you look up right there, you're gonna see a few grounds. We are gonna use that very top one up there. Let's see if I can do this while holding the camera. At least it's a new tractor and that's not seized solid from rust. It's a 13 millimeter socket. Get it pulled off there, set it right here. And then we gotta go back here and find our ground, which is right here. Okay, so we brought it through right there. And we have it stacked on top of that same stud. Take our nut. 
put her back on. And our 13. And we'll just snug her up. And I didn't really like how it twisted the wires, so I think I'm just gonna set this down and I'll hold them so they stay straight. And we'll get her tight. There we go. Don't forget your light under here. Okay, so let's grab our test light and we'll test it out. Yep, obviously we got power there. Now let's test up here. No power. There we are. And there we go, now we got power. So it's functioning with the key. That's gonna be really handy. We don't have to rely on the guys around the yard to uh, shut the things off manually. This one's just gonna come off when the key goes off. And since we put the auger and the two-way radio on it, everything's gonna be shut off and we shouldn't have any more trouble with this one. All right, she comes on with the key, just like she should. Awesome. Shut her down, let's see. What the heck? Okay, so after some testing, I got the cover back on now, but after some testing and some waiting, I found out that um, the disconnect doesn't shut off until it sits for about five minutes. So it's got about a five minute lead time on it. Once you turn that key off, it continues having battery power. Five minutes go by, all the battery power shuts off, and then the radio goes off just like it should. So we are good to go. Okay, I'm gonna put the cover back on, get the step and everything back in place, put that front wheel guard back on, and that's it, this one's done. Get to put the cover on the relay and of course some zip ties to tie everything up. Got our step back on, got our splash guard back on, get all those bolts, the three down there, two at the bottom, one, two, three on this side of the step, and the two bigger ones right there. I think that's, uh, I think that's it for this video. Good spoke covers everything on the 6175M battery disconnect. I'll see you next time, and you stay classy, YouTube.